I still say yes in glory unto him. Father, what is this, O oh God? For you are still in control of each and everything. She said, one for the Father, two for the Son, and third time for the Holy Ghost. Father in heaven, let thy will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm calling upon your blood, Father. I'm calling upon the blood of Jesus. Father, my book, book cannot be right. I only tremble in your presence. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let thy will be done. Father, you said tell them. So, Father, let your will be done. Loose your hold in the mighty name of Jesus. For Father is in control. Father of heaven. Father of light. Father of liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you have all power. You have all control. Father, you said come forth. Here I am in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I still you said yes unto your will, God. Here we are once again. Let thy will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. For you have all power. For you have all control. I shall not be moved. I call upon the name of Jesus. I call upon the blood, O oh God. Seal it right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's your power, it's your will, for you are in control, for you are magnificent, for you are the Holy One. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you ask the question, and Father, you shall answer, for you are the Lord that God. For you are the I am that I am. The wheel within the middle of the wheel. Father, for you are the Holy One. The Holy Cornerstone. For you are light within darkness. For you carry all power. Father, for I am nothing, God. For you are everything. For we say glory unto him, Father. For your children are going through a turmoil. The Father in Jesus' name, you have the power to loose it or permit it to happen. For you are the Lord, the God. Everything you do is necessary and justified. For you are the Lord, the God. Father, we shall not fight. We shall not tap out. We shall not quit. But Father, you said, what? Is that negligence? Father, forgive us for what we have done. We still say glory unto your name, Father, from the depths in the bowels of our soul. Father, we give you all that we got. Glory unto your name, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory unto your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What is our negligence, Father? We don't understand, but we submit in the name of Jesus. We submit, Father, unto your will, God. Glory unto your name, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we grip in our feet. Not only on to the ground, we grip our feet, Father, upon the rock to stay. Father, 
saying head button. Uh, he said to plant a tree uh, upon every side. Uh, my father in heaven, uh, I mean he seek God when he said what is out neglect. In the name of Jesus, glory, glory unto them, God, for you are the powerful one, for you are magnificent, the creator that created all things. Rismar, Lord, Sir, Father, how holy art thou in the name of Jesus, Father, you said unto to us, God, what is a negligence? Can we see the signs? Can we hear from heaven? We say glory unto thee, Father, for there is so much pain in the name of Jesus. Hear that broken heart. Heal that mind, Father. Hear the words that we speak, Malar. Respirar, Uber, Mirukur. You said you shall deliver. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, I understand not, but let thy will be done. Thy unto thee, Father. We've been struggling. For so long, Father, what is a negligence, Father? For we feel we are not worthy, but we still bow before your throne, God, even though we see it not, Father. Glory unto thee, Father. Let your will be done. We understand. Turn up, Father. Take it us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless your souls, God. Let me hear a word, sir. My dear, a prayer. Father, we beg in your Father, for it's a heavy load to bear. Touch your menace of God, for he in so much pain, but you said a negligence is getting in the way of our purpose. Father in heaven, holy art thou, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory unto thee, Father. We don't know nothing else, God. All we know how to do is trust, believe in thee, from the depths in the bowels of our soul. Remember, Father, remember them in the name of Jesus. Father, you're about to take so many people home, but. Heal their broken heart, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go on to the Father. Father, what is this? Respirer, Mukuror. Father, what is this, O oh God? Forgive us, Father. For our negligence. Forgive us, Father. For standing still. Father, in Jesus' name. Bless these souls. Down to their bones, God. Quicken them in the name of Jesus. For they know not what they do. Father in heaven. Touch them from the cross. In the head, oh God, unto the souls of the feet. Move by your spirit, God, for you compel us to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Jesus. My name is. <coughs> <coughs> Sir Cosmia, coming to you from the states of Connecticut. 
this is the brother's third time coming upon here. As I was saying before, the father has asked a question. And this question that the father asked has made my soul and my spirit so heavy. Because we, the fathers, ask this question. Not only through me of God, but almost knocked me off my feet. This is for spiritual folk. Not for churchified folk. No, the Christian police. This is for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Not seeking for a better way, but struggling to come up higher. And I fight and stuck. In mid flight. This is not for. Mr. and Miss, I can do better. This is not for those that take things personal. But this is for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Brother, I don't know if you can hear me because this is the third time. But it's alright in the mighty name of Jesus. Because everything the Father shall do, let's make it certain. Shall prevail. But not through my lips. The Father shall touch and speak to someone else. Because when it comes to the body of Christ, the Father gives a connection to all his children. Man and fleshly individuals acting as if everything is alright. But those that the Father is elevating and cannot see the elevation. The father wants to know what is the neglect. Then when I heard neglect, the father said many feel they're neglected. They're so busy being concentrated on being alone and being neglected. They feel to realize that they stand in the midst of negligence. I said, Jesus. I said, my son, before you say anything, what is your negligence? I was stopped, not for a moment, but for a while. Because I understood not what the Father meant by negligence. I, felt, I think about courts for negligence. The Father said, yeah, that sounds good. But many love me, but yet they are neglectful. Not neglectful towards me. But neglectful when it comes to others. So hungry to push hard and push hard and show and prove unto the world. But yet they're neglectful in the home. Yet they are neglectful when it comes to the truth. Yet they are neglectful when it comes to the marriage. Being so busy.
mighty moving and pushing moving and pushing but yet negligent negligent to the point that they fall way up here in the spirits believe the loved ones behind negligence I kept hearing the word negligent but the father said what is thy negligence I said uh oh so it's more than one matter that's not being taken care of started feeling heavy and low in my spirits when I kept hearing the word negligence what is your negligence my son what is it I couldn't give the father an answer then here comes the Holy Ghost that rests upon his children the spiritual individuals you know who you are because you just been through this this morning 2.30 this morning you know who you are feeling as if you're not complete Pushing and going and have all your ducks hit a roo. But come to find out, them ducks didn't matter because why you are negligent because you didn't seek the father for an answer, but you lined them up without his permission. Huh? Wait one minute, brothers can tell this too as well. That's why I made my spirit so heavy. Don't go nowhere, but I'm here and so busy and not enough time within the day with school and prayer, studying, reading scripture. But the father said, what is thy negligence? When I finally heard it and realized the tone in the way it was said the father said tell them they're being neglectful with my gospel they're being neglectful with their loved ones but yet they feel they are completing something but yet everything is incomplete and the reason why it's Incomplete. Cause one, they overzealous and gluttonizing in the spirit of God with hunger, but yet still negligent. I couldn't understand what the father meant by still negligent. It started weighing on me all day for the last couple of days. One minute the vocabulary word was there, but then next thing you know, what's it? There. Then woke it up. We are our. And the father said, again, what is thy neglect? Brother started thinking in his mind, you know. Many of us as stressful beings can mention how we have been neglected. But now we can take ownership of neglecting of us and not only that, your true mission from your father. Neglection and neglect, Brother Hatton, look it up. Fail 
failure to take proper care of doing something. But as I was looking it up, the spirit of Almighty God started to show me my deglection. Being in school and picking what I want to pick. Trying to justify why I'm doing better in one class and not in the other. But when it comes to my father, doesn't matter how long it takes to pray, to read his story. But everything else in life I have neglected. Tell the truth, shame the devil. But if you really think in your mind of things you refuse to own up to that you have neglected, then you find out you have been lacking with God and some of the fruits of the Spirit of Almighty God. One group is nine, the other group is seven. But maximum as a comparison of how you move in frequency in life and do certain things. And what you are neglecting, but yet, wait for it. Like mother did, try to justify it. As the truth started showing up in my face. And the father said, Now you see your negligence. What are you going to do? Many people feel that they rejoice in the father. Flying around in the spirit and being nosy, peeping at other people's house. You know who you are. But yet neglectful with your health. Neglectful with your home. Neglectful in your marriage, in your relationship. It's walking around talking about how much you love Jesus, but you are sinning against him by doing what? Being accountable with negligence. Maybe it's for you now, maybe it's for you later. But the Father wants us to be up to snuff, you know. It's not about innocent blood. It's about grooming people around about you to take on the pain that you do not recognize that you are doing and you're doing it in the name of the Lord, the blood of Jesus. This is why my spirit was so heavy within myself. The brother thought he was doing everything right, but the father said, What is thy negligence? I said, Uh oh. Well, Lord, uh, he said, Don't give me no excuse. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Examine thyself. I correct the ones that I love for a reason because where I'm about to take you, recognize your negligence. Recognize who you are in the prayers that I have answered for thee. Recognize my oughtness and my statutes. Do not be neglectful in your walk with me. Being reblinded and looking towards heaven. And I recognize those around the back that's pushing you forward, praying for you, cheering for you. What is thy negligence? 
when I heard that a brother started getting very fearful and I'm gonna tell you why we need to keep their mind upon things that are against them but never recognize the things that are with them and those who praying for them those that stand upon their knees touching heaven for you but you being neglectful because you're so busy pushing forward in confusion and wrecking heart like the world said smarter why work so hard when your father can do the impossible That I had to walk and stand before my bride and kneel and lay before her. She ain't say one mumbly word. And I said to my bride, I'm not perfect. Right for. But forgive me for not hearing you because some brothers have a different type of hearing, you know. Every time we hear a sister talk, everything sounds like wah, 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 just like on the peanuts. Tell the truth and say me different. We don't have no idea where they're going when they're talking to us. Because our function is to do it and get it done. Take care of the family. Push forward going to school. Go on to work to make this paper. They need to know it ain't diff that is difficult out here for a brother. You know who you are. But in the midst of your pushing forward. The father said we're praying brother. But why I be upon thy knees and constantly in prayer? But in your other hand, for you are negligent on what's going on round about you that things are not coming full circle. Same thing for the sisters too. Hold on, wait a minute now. So busy. Trying to prove to the world you don't need no one. But when it's time for prayer, you know what I ask for that? You don't need no man to be laid up there. Going to school, going to work. Side hustle. Side to never be missed. Hanging out with your girlfriend. Prayer service, Bible study. Ministering on daughters, you know who you are. Kids tolerating you. Husband tolerating you. You are still neglectful. You have negligence to your family. Negligence to thyself. That's why you are depleted. And don't have that much energy or time in the day. A brother's can tell this too. Tell the truth and say the devil. Oh yeah. Working and working and studying and studying. But yet still what negligence. Such a part of the definition of some of their incidents are due to negligence, period. To behave with a level of care that someone of ordinary prudence would have exercised under the same circumstances. Uh oh. Negligence. Don't have that tenacity or that ability or quality. When it comes to serve the Lord, everything's all up here. Everything else is down here. Take it, wait. 
Of course they can wait. But the Father said do everything decently and in order. That's why God is good orderly direction. There is no balance because the Father said we are in negligence. Get it together. If your life is not fully balanced of a spiritual being. If everything around you is not spiritual and on a frequency with all much of God. That's why there's so many people that serve the Lord, thy God. Hold on, wait one minute. Not married. Can't maintain and keep a relationship. No one is a deep to serve the Lord, thy God. But forget not the other individuals that's round about you, pushing you forward, praying for you in quietness and in secret. Then your, your relationship is no longer. Because you are negligent, not them. They got tired of waiting on you to recognize them in a the room with you. Hell! So why would they want to serve your God when your God took everything away but God is the one that put y'all together in the first place. But you cannot get your relationship together because they're not negligent. God said you are negligent and get it together. Repent, apologize, reprove and move. Move forward. Hand in hand together. So when I heard this, the heaviness was on my heart, not only concerning my household. The heaviness was on my heart. Why? Because those that I love and close to me are so far but know me not. And I really don't know them. Ha! Huh? Wait one minute. What's the point of negligence? It goes with negligence. Favoring one thing and forgetting about everyone else that made you who you are. Mm -mm -mm. Exactly. So involved in what you need. Constantly in the Father's face and on your knees, praying and praying, crying and crying. But not knowing the same person that's in the next room, before you got upon your knees, was already praying for you, for you. Why am I negligent? I do everything I'm supposed to do. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, guess what? Before this sermon is over, the Father's going to remind you of your negligence that you were blind to a bit over zealous and not getting your full instructions from all much of God. Watching this, watching that, mapping everything out, got a wrong list for God. But where's the list for your Matt Rich? Where is the list for that two track now? You get a God a list. But where's your list of your inventory, your shortcomings of being negligent in thy ministry, God said. Yeah, I will slap up, ship up, and get their stuff together for you. Because you the prophet, you the, the apostle, the bishop, but yet you are negligent by not teaching your flock. But you are regurgitating and filling yourself up with the word. And giving them minimal covering, but you talk about you. Turn into them. They don't pay enough t 
baptized, they are not obedient. The Father said to say unto you this day, why should they be obedient when you are holding the negligence from the Father? But you want them to show and prove. Jump up and down as soon as you walk in the room like you the Lord thy God. But yet you are negligent in your home. Yet you are an infidel in your home. You don't want to see your negligence you just hiding. So praise the Lord everybody. Yeah, God, yes, the Lord thy God is good. But are you good to others? Sit around in front of everybody. Do you take them by the hand and let them know that you love them? Do you repent constantly? Or do you always feel you're right and still what? Negligent, responsible for someone else hurt, someone else pain, their thoughts of thinking about you and don't even know you or who you have become. When I heard that from the Father, my spirit, my heart started to get heavy. And the Father said unto me, Try not what you're not responsible for. Hold up to your mistakes. Keep it moving and correct it. Many say they save, sanctify, consecrated under the law of our God, but negligent to a lot of things. Negligent. To themselves, not upkeeping yourself, constantly sick, over and over again. What is that negligence? The Father said. You claim you're being neglected, but the Father said you are neglecting those round about you, and you're neglecting yourself, for He is not pleased for the body of Christ has to be solid and strong. What is that negligence? Yeah, that's a good sermon. It sounds good. Oh, yes, it is. That you gotta be blessed. Dabbling with God. Come to you, give it a, this seed, that seed, but yet you're not taking care of home. Lights ain't on, roaches crawling across the floor, kids are being bit by mice. You are negligent. But you take it to the church. Sleeping around in the church. Won't clean up your home. Won't comfort your husband. Encourage your children. What is thy negligence? Meaning a hungry for the Father. Oh yes we are. Loving with all thy soul and all thy heart. But yet negligence. That balance in gold. That's why there's so much hell going around. Because there's no alignment and balance between two negligence. There'll be the Old Testament. But they ain't going to keep you that long. I know. I say that all the time. I know, dear. Blessings unto you. Second Corinthians, not Corinthians, the blood of Jesus. Second Chronicles 29 and 11. Which is in the Old Testament. When I looked at this, which will be after the book of First and Second Kings, there will be First Chronicles and there will be Second Chronicles. I didn't know where the father was going, but this is concerning this, this scripture. As I was reading it, Brother Glantz, or 
over it. Come to my surprise, the words in the whole yes it is. 2911 Second Chronicles C H R O N I C L E S Chronicles. When I looked at this, I said, Lord, these are the priests talking unto the people from their perspective. The high priest and the priest talking to the folk from the way the father's giving it on to them and the father wants me to give it on to you. Yes, he does. 29 and 11 and it reads like this. For my son's be not now uh -oh, the great conjunction. This is about the renewed covenant of God. When it comes to covenant, covenant is agreement between two individuals like a contract you know contract between man and God and it says after conjunction for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him pause to Serve him, Paul, and that you should what? This is for you. You know who you are. Minister unto him, Paul, and burn what? Incense, an offering unto God thyself, thy prayers. There's a scripture here in the word of God that says when your prayers go up to God it's like sweet smelling what? Insect unto God. But here this is talking about zeal. Running on and doing stuff. Telling you the promise of all matter God. They're speaking and talking on to the people about the ordinance of God, the laws that will forecome and that were foretold and how the covenant will be renewed, which they are talking about who? Exactly, Jesus Christ. Right here they're saying, now this is the priest talking to them now. You got all these instruments. But what instrument shall you choose? Tell you don't be neglectful of thinking of one thing more important than the other. Talking to the holy men and the holy women of God in this time. Say, be not now, in other words, you do what you're supposed to do. But now we bring you on notice that you're going to become too, you're going to become neglectful because you're doing more than one thing at one time. And that you are the chosen people of Almighty God. To not be neglectful. As if the whole world is against you. Do not be neglectful. Of concentrating on who likes you and who don't like you. And how hard it is that you have to continue to push forward. According to the scripture. You were chosen. To be 
before what? The Father's throne. You were chosen to stand before him. To serve him. And that ye should what? Minister unto the Lord thy God. How may you continue to minister when thy negligence is outweighing your ministry? How may you push forward? When your negligence is wearing you down and you're trying to push and drag forward, but you cannot go no further. Take notice in this scripture that there's an inventory and a structure on what is said unto the people here, which is they speak it unto the people of Israel. Tell them that they are the chosen people of all the might of God. On what they need to do, but now they are negligent. They're negligent. What to serve him and what other things? What thing to serve him and what thing this and what thing that and having their eyes upon multitude and other things, but yet. The prophet is speaking unto them about their fleshful desires, their fleshful wants, and reminding them of the covenant that God made with them. Reminding them that they have been chosen before any other tribe to stand before the Lord our God because they were chosen. They are to minister, not to digress. Not to worry. Not to boo hoo and cry neither. In other words, put that jump down. Concentrate on your father. Let the father heal you and deal with you in this manner. How may the father deal with you in this manner when you are negligent, doing more than one thing, but put one thing above the other and slacking in the other? And now you want to turn around and look and say, Lord, I don't know what happened. Lord, I don't know why I can't stay married or stay in a relationship. But trust and believe if you take in your mind, when you're running for the Lord and running for your life. You are running to this church, that service, ministering unto this one, ministering unto that one, praying for this one, praying for that one, but you left what? Your loved one at home. You left that loved one laying there that they should understand. For you are negligent. It was your fault that it happened that way because you became negligent and blinded to the Father's what? Glory. Hello! That's why the Father say you can't serve two masters at one time. It's all about how can you be negligent? They just understand you was doing the work of the law. The Father say, not so. You pray for everything else and what you pray for, he has granted it unto you. To be a bride, to be a husband, but yet your negligence is you took your eyes off your blessing. You started running elsewhere. You started going towards another path. Instead of praying to the Father to take care of what he brought with you. How do you know if that person wasn't praying for you? Watching God move and getting deeper and deeper in God. But you are negligent because you're doing something else. Instead of putting your energy into every single thing you do that the Father, what, has blessed you with. Your next and your last scripture. Which is in the New Testament. Second Peter one and twelve. When I looked at this as a father, I understand not. And realized it was the ex 
explanation for Second Chronicles twenty nine and eleven. First Peter in the New Testament after the book of Hebrews. James Hebrews and James and then it's Peter. First Peter, second Peter. After Hebrews, after James, then there's Peter. Peter, second chapter. Jesus, bloody Jesus. Second Peter, bloody Jesus. First chapter, second verse. Better yet, first, second Peter. First chapter. 12th verse 2nd Peter 1 and 12 when I started realizing where the father was going brother give me to tell you I stole that The father took me down memory lane of where I was last year and the year before that. I had all the time in the world I was bored and was bought some time was just passing me by. The father gave me a dream and a vision about school. I told you about it before. I end up in school. Went back and got my diploma. I thought I was done and the father continued on that dream that I needed to stay in school. Got in school and all of a sudden had no time for my wife. No time for my children. Minimal time with the grandchildren. Kept pressing on, kept going and praying and constantly fasting when a brother's fasting on answer the phone, not around the family. Close myself up with the Father. But yet, they still waiting, you know. Not getting in the way of the Lord thy God, but yet, the Father remind me today, I have been negligent. And the reason why the brother is sharing this with you. Because whoever you are, you want to know why when you get stronger and deeper and deeper into the Lord thy God. And the Father sees you, someone. Why is it that the devil get busy and they start acting up? The Father said to remind you upon this day, the reason why they're acting up is because you have been negligent. They understood that you are doing the will of all, my to God. But forget not who's breathing with you. Forget not who's in your household with you. They're still waiting, being patient. Yes, the father's patient and a jealous God. But the father said everything you have prayed for, for he is granted it unto you. But you have been in thy negligence. Letting your blessing grow dust, but yet you wonder why he's no longer blessing you because of thy negligence. Second Peter 1 and 12, and it reads like this Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things but hello the kingdom of God though ye know them in other words you know them you know my word you know my son you know how to pray minister unto the people 
You know how to go according to the things that I have ordained you to do. But I'm not going to be forgetful to remind you to keep yourself in line. You already know these things. Let it continue on and say, be established. Now homeless, couch to couch, church to church, doctrine to doctrine, be ye established. Established. In other words, grounded. In the presence of truth. Who is truth? The word of Almighty God. God himself. Period. No, I go remind you of your responsibilities. You know me. I know you. I made you. Always put it in your remembrance. You have free will. Why should I remind you when you have a rapport with me? If you have this rapport with me, wait for it. Why aren't you established to know that you are what? Negligent. Why are you not recognizing your negligence? We have me before you and I've granted everything unto you, but you let everything else in your life tumble round about you and then you want to cry to me. I'm not going to remind you that you are neglectful. Yes, you praise in me. Yes, you are my chosen. Yes, you are my minister. Yes, you are my child. But thy negligence. I'm not going to remind you. I'm not going to give you wrong call because you know exactly what you're doing and you're letting it fall. By the way, son, what is the negligence? Yes, I'm a powerful and a jealous God. But I granted all these things unto you. Trinkets, toys, family. These are the things you wanted. I granted it unto you. But yet you are negligent. What is thy negligence? How can you have balance with me and the life that I granted you? All the energy you put into me. Did you put that energy into the other things, into the other people I have blessed to be in your life? What is the negligence? Yes, you can be holy. Yes, you can be sanctified. Yes, you can be chosen. But you put all this energy into the fire. Blessings unto you. But what about the energy of your family loving them equally? You can still love them and love the Father more, but still love them where their souls will be covered, where their mind will be regulated and right. Father say that's the news. Yes, there's going to be a part two to this one. Also, God does what he wants and God does what he will. Don't be negligent. Sit down and talk with your father and find out where is your negligence and correct it. The father said the reason why we are being neglectful. Not only dealing with being overzealous, but you leaving room for the enemy to work on that neglect to work against you. What is the negligence? 
in thy negligence. You get so for this minions, something to work with. Fix it, repent, correct it in the mighty name of Jesus. Find out what is thy negligence. Fix it, clean it up in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to fast. Don't forget to anoint that truth. My name is Sir Casimir, coming to you from the state of Connecticut. God speed it. Keep thy feet gripped on to the ground. There'll be a part two later. God speed later. Yes, Lord.